Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, we're going to adjust a portrait using all the portrait specific tools that are available in On One Photo Raw 2020. Now, I don't really adjust my portraits too heavily. So I would start out with something that looks like this and end up with something that looks like this. We're going to be working on this image. It's a photo I downloaded from Adobe Stock. I did a simple search, no makeup, and this is one of several images that popped up. And I thought this one would work best for this presentation. Now, typically when you're going to process an image, you start out in the develop module and you adjust white balance and tone and color. My recommendation to you is if you're doing a portrait and the portrait is exposed properly and the white balance is okay, don't do tone and color first. Use the portrait specific tools in on one first. Then after you use those tools, go in and touch up tone and color. Now, of course, if your exposure is way off or the white balance is bad, by all means, fix that right away. But in most instances with portraiture, you probably won't have to. You nailed it in camera and you'll be better off in the long run to save that until uh, save those tools tone color white balance until after you do the portrait specific tools you'll find that your portrait will just look better once you do it that way now the first thing you should do when you're working on a portrait is remove blemishes and any flyaway hair now this model really doesn't have any blemishes she has maybe a couple tiny little um, blackheads maybe we'll take care of those she does have a lot of flyaway hair and you'll really be doing yourself a favor if when you're taking the photo that you make sure that your subject's hair looks nice. Uh, the hardest thing to fix in post-production is flyaway hair. It's the most difficult thing to take care of in any application, not just on one. So try to get it right before you snap the shutter. And then I think you'll find in the long run, your post-processing is going to go a lot faster. So we're gonna do some of it. I mean, she has a lot of flyaway hair. I'm just gonna show you some of the tools you use. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom in and you can see that there's some flyaway hairs here, just a couple. She has a lot, but just these easy ones will do. And she also has some little tiny little blemishes there and we'll take care of that as well. And what you wanna do is you wanna go to the retouch panel. If you look over here in the tool well, you can see that there's a little retouch section. Click on that. And then across the top, you'll see there's three tools. From left to right, you have the perfect eraser tool, the retouch brush tool, and the clone stamp tool. Most often, one of the first to work well for either flyaway hair and or blemishes, that is the perfect eraser or retouch brush. On some images, the retouch brush will work best, but then on other images, you'll find the perfect eraser works best. best. So try both. So we're gonna start out with the perfect eraser since we're clicked on that. And there really is just one thing uh, one attribute you could affect, and that is the size. You could go up here, click here, and there's a little um, a little slider for size, or you could use the bracket key. So the left bracket key makes the brush smaller, right bracket key larger. So we're gonna get a size just a little bigger than the hair that we're going to remove, and we're just going to paint as closely as possible along this hair. And then let it do it. Let it do its thing. It just takes a second or two, and see how it does. And it removed it. There's a tiny bit, maybe, of a line there, but I wouldn't worry about it because we're going to do some skin smoothing in a moment, and it will take care of that. So that is the perfect eraser. Now to the retouch brush, we have some more tools. We have feathering, and I found for most often for blemishes and or hair. Uh, feathering around 30 to 50 works well. We're right at 40, so we'll leave it there. And opacity at 100. Sometimes to get it to blend in a little better, you might want to turn opacity down below 100, usually 70 in there somewhere, but we'll leave it at 100. And the same thing, the bracket keys will change the size. And we'll just come in here and I'll go across this flyaway here. Like that. See how that does? It did fine. There's a little, tiny bit of a track there, but. We'll leave it. Like I said, the, the tools we're going to be using in a moment will take care of that track, make it disappear. And like I mentioned, she has some tiny little blemishes there. You could come in and just paint on those real quick. 
take those out. Now, if you find that it's not quite blending right, you could try taking opacity down a little bit. Um, see how that works. Typically, I found opacity at 100 works best. So that's it. I usually, um, anything that is temporary, like a pimple, a blackhead, something like that, I'll remove. But something that's more permanent, like a mole, I won't remove that unless the um, uh, subject specifically, specifically asked me to. So that's how you would go about uh, dealing with the flyaway hair and blemishes. Very easy to do. Again, she has a lot. I'm not going to work with all the hair. This would take a really long time to work on all this hair that is kind of flying all over the place. So we did that. Now I mentioned there's some portrait specific tools in on one and you probably noticed them when you're in the edit panel. We have develop effects and portrait. So we're gonna click on portrait and when you do, most often it's going to find uh, the face automatically. In this case, it didn't. Uh, sometimes it doesn't and if it doesn't, uh, just click on this little uh, like person icon here to add a face. And when you do that, this box pops up. And you could then place this box over the face. And you could grab these handles and kind of move it so it's larger, like that. So you have the face encapsulated inside of the box. And when you're ready, just click OK. So now it found the face. Well, you helped it find the face. But it's probably not perfect. So what I recommend you do is go over here on the right-hand side where you have your portrait panel, click on Skin, then click on View. And what you'll do is you'll get a red overlay. Now, wherever the red overlay is, your portrait adjustments won't affect that area at all. Wherever it isn't, it will be affected. Now, we don't want blemish removal, skin removal, and all that stuff uh, to affect her hair. We just want it to affect her skin. Also, in this image, I want to also uh, smooth the skin on her neck and shoulders as well. And you can see that that is excluded. But you'll notice when I clicked on View, uh, a brush came onto our uh, cursor here. And it has a plus sign in, so we could paint in the adjustment. So make sure the opacity is at 100. And then come down here. And now we could come in and we could then add everywhere we want to add. So I'm just going to do it very quickly. Uh, this, If I wasn't doing the video, of course, I would take my time and make sure that I do a much better job. That was horrible what I just did there. Now, if you find you messed up like that, hold the Alt or Option key in. Alt if you have a PC option. If you have a Mac, and you'll see you'll toggle the brush to a minus sign. And then you could come in and take care of that. Get a smaller brush with the left left bracket key and maybe do a better job there. Probably not. I'm just going to go very quickly. I'm not really going to worry about, since we have a plain background there, it's not going to matter. Large bracket key here. Now, it, it is selecting a lot of her hair, and I don't want it to do that. I could, hold, I could hold the Alter Option key in, or quicker or easier maybe is to go up here and go to Paint Out Mode, and then I could come in here and make sure that all her hair is, is not part of the mask. All right, so I'm just going to go real quick like this, and then I'll come in and touch it up. I'll go to paint in mode. I'll get a smaller brush, and I'll make sure that we're really grabbing her skin as needed. This is actually a very bad job I'm doing here, but you get the idea, all right? Hold the Alt key and maybe get in there. Okay, eh, good enough for now. All right, so... That's our mask. I have it, so now it's going to affect uh, the skin on her face, neck, and shoulders, and we're good. So we're going to come back here and turn view off. All right, now you could just go to the actual sliders here and start affecting the skin. But before we do that, let's tell on one where her eyes and lips are. To do that, you can see right here there's a little icon that's an eye. Click on that. That's your eye tool, and it's telling you to click on the center of each eye. So what you do is just go right in the middle of the iris of her eye and click there once and go on this eye and click there once. And once you do that, you'll see there's these overlays here. Now you just move these little handles that are on the overlay to match the person's eyes. And you just 
do the best to try to get it so it's just uh, on the actual eye, not on her eyelashes necessarily or um, or her uh, eyelid, like that. So just take a second. Get that. The best job you could do here, the better it will look in the long run. So don't be afraid to take your time and make sure that these are right on her eye. So we did good there. Next, our lips. So we'll click there. And now it's uh, click on the corners of the mouth, including the teeth. All right. So we're going to go, there's the corner of the mouth there. And there's the corner of the mouth there. All right now we have this uh, overlay. Now it's way off. So we'll go right in the middle and we'll pull it down. We'll go up here and push this one up, push this one up. Now this bottom line goes to the bottom of her bottom lip. This line that's second from the bottom goes to the top of her bottom lip. This one goes to the bottom of her top lip. And this one goes to the top of her top lip. And then you can kind of move these around to kind of get that as nice as possible. So that is our mask for her mouth. All right, and then when you're done there, you're done there. Looks good. Now we could start really adjusting uh, the image. Let's go with uh, blemishes. Now I mentioned the larger blemishes definitely use the Perfect Eraser or Retouch Brush. This will help fade them with this uh, slider. And you can see as I move it to the right, how it's not only fading blemishes, it's kind of um, taking out some of the wrinkles that are under her eyes a little bit and whatnot. So uh, you want to put it back to its default position, just double click on the name. So if you have that, let's say maxed out, and you want to put it on its default position, double click on the word blemishes, and it will put it back to its default position. Now skin smoothing itself, move that to the right. And you can see now it's smoothing her skin, you could really over smooth her skin, but you can see how it's working on her neck, shoulders, and uh, as well, because I added the, uh, the mask down there. So we'll do that. We could get rid of any shine in her skin here. We could, uh, if the skin is blotchy, you could adjust the evenness of her skin with this slider. See that? It's affecting kind of the color temperature. As I move it to the right, it seems to make her skin a little warmer. And the range of her skin, you could see as you move that, you get a kind of a overlay put on, and it's uh, kind of a mask where it's going to affect her skin the most. And as you move it to the right, it's affecting every, uh, every bit of her skin. And as I move it to the left, it's kind of just getting the hot areas, what it considers to be the hot areas. And you can see it's excluding her lips, teeth, eyes, because we have masks over those. Uh, but I'm going to move that to the right a little bit. Let go. I don't like that. That's horrible. I'm going to move that down. Let's go back to the default position. We'll double click on it. That looks all right. So I'm going to smooth it just a tiny bit more. Move blemishes just a little more. Maybe overdo it a little bit for this demonstration so you could actually see that it does something. Because that, to me, is a little bit too much. It's a lot of bit too much. More than I would do. Uh, those of you that know my portraiture know that I barely do. <laughs> I do very little, actually. Uh, most of the often, though, if I, especially if I'm dealing with female models, they're wearing makeup. And, you know, if they're wearing makeup, you don't really have to do a lot, uh, generally speaking. So, anyway, bring that down a little bit. All right, let's go to the eyes. Whitening. This is the whites of her eyes. You move that to the right, and you can see how it whitens her eyes. And this is the detail of her irises. She has dark eyes, so we're not going to get a ton of detail there. All right. Um, if there was a flash and she had red eye, you could click there and it would remove red eye. And this is mouth uh, adjustments here. You could whiten her teeth. There, you can see you can make them really pearly white, like a you know, 6 o'clock newswoman's white teeth or something like that. And the vibrance of her lips. You can move it to the right and you can see they're really getting cherry red. And you can just move that up a little bit. All right, so also once you do all these adjustments, what I suggest you do is walk away for a little bit, rest your eyes and come back, and you may find, wow, that's a little bit too heavy-handed, right? There's before and there's after. Well, what you could do instead of coming in and readjusting everything, just go to the opacity slider and pull opacity down a little bit. 
and I think you'll find it will help a lot. There's before and after. Yeah, that's more like, I guess, what I would do. So that's uh, pretty much it. You're done with the portrait part of it. Now you could do those develop adjustments that I mentioned before. Most often you're not going to have to do a lot here because hopefully you nailed it in camera. But, you know, you could come in and, you, you know, maybe bring the whites up or down. You know, you want to get a super high key look or something like that. You could work on uh, stuff here as well. What I will do, I think, is um, go to color temperature and I'll just warm it up. And that's it. I'm not going to go too overboard. I don't want to misrepresent. Typically what I do is a way of suggesting that you should do more than I would do. Uh, but you could see that with the portrait adjustments, um, the sky's the limit because you could go very light on the adjusting of blemishes, smoothing, skin smoothing and things. Or you could go like really heavy, like something that would be in Vogue magazine, uh, you know, super porcelain skin look or something like that, if you need to. So that's it. That's how you adjust a portrait in On One Photo Raw 2020. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>